In this video I will show you how to use all of the features in the Hasselblad 500C and uh, yeah there's quite a lot of them. Today I will thoroughly but concisely go through all of the features in the Hasselblad 500C. Timestamps down in the descriptions down below so if you're just looking for any specific thing like how to use the lens uh, go down there and just skip ahead. Let's begin and look at the overall build. The camera feature is a modular design which means that you can remove and replace uh, a lot of different things on the camera. Uh, the most compelling argument for this is that you can remove the back and you do that by just simply sliding this button here and removing it. You have to make sure to have the dark slide in so you don't expose uh, any film you got in there. This is quite nice because you can have like multiple bags with different film stocks in it. Uh, maybe you want to have one with black and white, one with color, or one with fast and one with slow speed. You open the viewfinder on this camera by sliding this button to the right and it will unfold like that. And uh, if you want to open a magnifier, you slide it once again and it turns up like that. This is of course replaceable as well. To replace it you have to have the film back off and then you can just slide it out. The original viewfinder is a waist level viewfinder, uh, meaning you look down on it. Um, but there's also other sorts. On the right side of the camera you have the film advance lever. Uh, on my unit I have this little stick that uh, you use to wind. Uh, there's also, it's quite normal to just have a wheel that you turn like that. The lenses are of course interchangeable as well. To release them you simply press this button or hold it in and twist it and then you can release it. And to attach it you will hear a uh, click when it's securely fitted. If you're struggling to remove the lens, uh, you might want to check if the mirror is up. Uh, so try and advance the film lever and see that it's advanced. Uh, you can check this window here and see that it's white. Uh, if the mirror isn't up, the camera won't let you remove the lens. And if you can't advance the film, try and see if this shutter uh, this little stick on the shutter is set to O. Also, these windows um, will tell you what uh, state the camera is in. And you always want these to align in color when mounting a new back onto the camera. Um, it's just so that everything works together. Loading film into the camera is relatively easy. First, you remove the back magazine and you do this by pulling this lever out and twisting. There will be two spots for a spool to sit in. You want an empty spool sitting in a slot which has a small wheel on it. Then you place your film on the other slot. Unlock the lever on the side and this small metal strip will pop out. Place the film beneath it and lock once more. Now insert the film into the empty spool and tighten it. Some cameras have certain spots you need to align these arrows on the film, not the 500C. Just make sure that the film has been threaded into the spool and is secured tightly. Then place the magazine back into the camera. Now we have to advance the film to the first frame. To do this, open a small door in the back and advance the film with this lever on the other side, the right hand side. Once you see the number one through the small door, this can be quite hard to see, uh, but then you know that you are at frame number one. Now turn this film advance lever backwards or anti-clockwise and that will lock it in place. The number one will also pop up in this small window here which tells you what number of exposure you are on. The lenses on these cameras are actually quite special because the shutter is in the lens itself. 
Firstly, you have the focusing ring and this works as any other, you just turn it to change the focus. Depending on the version of your camera, this will be in either meters or in feet. The next element is the aperture and shutter speed ring. Whatever this black line lines up with is what the camera will use as aperture. However, the actual aperture won't change as you turn the wheel. It will only engage just as the picture is about to be taken. This is so the most amount of light can be let in through the viewfinder and to make it easier to focus when stopped down. As you turn the aperture ring, you can see these red lines expanding. This relates to the focusing wheel and gives you an estimate of how much is in focus. Now to maybe the most unorthodox thing about this camera. The shutter speed and the aperture is on the same ring. There are also some numbers here which I shall explain as well. The black numbers are for shutter speed itself. 500 is for 1 500th of a second and it goes all the way down to B which stands for bulb. This is the mode where you uh, choose however long you want to expose. It's for long exposures. To change the shutter speed, you rotate the same wheel as the aperture wheel. So to keep the same aperture but change the shutter speed, you have to pull this small metal piece inwards. You might have seen that there are some red numbers on this lens as well. These are exposure values. Some light meters can give you a number based on a metering, which you then can use to base your exposure out of. However, I don't really find this too useful as I use my smartphone to meter scenes based on what aperture and film speed I use. Incredibly, there's also a self-timer on this lens. I've been told this is a function that often breaks on these models, but on mine it still works brilliantly. To use it, you have to switch this lever on the shutter from O to T. Then you push this metal piece outwards while you're pushing this piece towards V. You will feel it winding up. Then you just have to press the shutter button and it will start ticking. And after about 8 seconds, it will fire a shot. Afterwards, you have to switch the lever back to O and advance the film as usual. The M and the X mark on this dial is for different types of flash sync. Sadly, I haven't used the flash with this camera yet, uh, so I can't tell you too much about it, but it should be pretty much plug and play. Uh, the camera supports uh, flash sync at all of the different shutter speeds. And if you just want to take normal exposures, just leave it at the X. There's also this quite hidden button right below the film advance lever. Pushing this will let you flip down the mirror and this might be useful if you're shooting at slower shutter speeds and with a locked down shot on a tripod. To be able to take a picture, you first have to remove the dark slide. You just grab onto it and pull outwards. The camera won't actually fire unless you have pulled this one out and that's quite useful so you don't waste shots and it has definitely saved me a ton of times. Other than that, it's just catching the critical focus. Uh, you can use the focus magnifier and if you want to get a better look and uh, then you just press the shutter and you advance the film and then you're ready for the next shot. To use the bulb mode on this camera, it's uh, recommended to have a cable release, which looks like this. This you simply screw on, uh, screw into the shutter and uh, then to take a picture, you just press it down. The bulb mode lets you shoot long exposures and to do this, if you have connected a cable release, you just switch to B and then hold for as long as you want to have it exposed and then you release and then you just advance. If you want to shoot long exposures and you don't have a cable release, you simply dial this to T and then when you press the shutter button, uh, everything will stay open until you push this dial back. Unfortunately, there is no light meter built into the Hasselblad 500C. Uh, I use a free app on my Android phone, which is called Light Meter Free. Uh, and it works wonderfully. You simply select your film speed, and I usually select what aperture I'd like to use. Then I point it at my subject and it will meter the scene and tell you what shutter speed that is correct. 
You can also select what shutter speeds you like and it will tell you what aperture is needed. And what I do if I want to overexpose my film, I simply change the ISO. To overexpose one stop, you have to cut your ISO in half. So if you're shooting the popular Portra 500, let's say, uh, just choose 200 ISO and uh, then the metering will overexpose for one stop. And if you choose 100 ISO, it will overexpose two stops. If you have any questions or maybe you think that I left something out, just hit me up in the comments down below and I will be sure to answer you as soon as I can. Uh, otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you later.